Hello and welcome to this PTGUI tutorial series. Today's segment is all about control points. I'll introduce you to the concept and then show you how they are manipulated in PTGUI's main interface by stitching a fully spherical 360 degree panorama. So let's start talking about control points. This is a really crucial concept, so I want to give it a really good shot to try to explain this to you. So what are control points doing? Well, we use those to indicate the same kind of physical feature that shows up in two different images. And by pinpointing that particular feature in two different images, PTGUI then knows how these two images relate to each other. There's one little exception, there are line type control points and therefore a little bit more advanced use and we'll talk about this later. But regular control points just pinpoint features and you use them to pinpoint the same feature in two different images. Back in the day, these needed to be manually created, but thankfully, since the early 2000s, there are some algorithms that generate them automatically for you. If you want to read up a little bit on the topic, it's pretty cool. Have a look at the Wikipedia page for the SIFT algorithm. So generally, these algorithms work like this. They take an image and they do this independently by image, of course, in the beginning. And inside this image, they just try to find some kind of remarkable features. They'll then filter a little bit around so they don't take features in sort of very low contrast areas which aren't very unique or along edges and that kind of stuff. Then once it got its set of features, it calculates some kind of fingerprint. And this fingerprint is used to identify this feature. And the really cool thing is this fingerprint is sort of robust to a whole bunch of different changes. So if the pixels in that area are a little bit distorted, if they're bigger or smaller, and even if the color changes, the fingerprint will be the same. And this is the magic because it allows you then, if in two images the same fingerprint shows up, well, to assume that this is the same feature in these two different images. Now, with that in mind, it's not very difficult to understand that the algorithm can't be perfect. Think of a super regular geometric pattern. Well, this might lead to control points which are on physically different things, but optically look the same. So the algorithm pairs them together and then PTGUI tries its very best to match these two points on top of each other. And then you'll lead to some very bad optimization results or visually bad results. So in situations like this, you might have to do some manual work moving around those control points or pruning those outliers. But we'll see how this can be done quite easily in the interface. But let's go back to the control point generator. For this to work, PTGUI needs a rough starting point. It does need to know the kind of lens you used, needs to have a ballpark figure of the focal length, the sensor size, and if it's a fisheye, where the crop circle is inside that image. But in most situations, all this information can simply be read straight off the EXIF information contained in your images. If you don't have any EXIF information, like when you're using a manual lens, that's not a problem either. You can just very simply specify them manually. That's really all I wanted to say about control points. So let's get started with a fresh project and let's get stitching a fully spherical 360 panorama. For this demonstration, I'm again using those images that we'll provide to you. And I've taken those in a tunnel for several reasons. There's four images going around in each four directions of the compass, so to say, 90 degrees apart, as well as one which goes vertically down. But we're not gonna use this one just yet. That'll be used later for a little bit more advanced things. So let's start with these four images. We'll drag and drop them into PTGUI. And we can see that PTGUI has discovered the EXIF information and that it's considering this to be a circular fisheye and on a full frame sensor that is my camera. I could again go in here and adjust that, but that is actually a correct choice for this lens that I'm using. Let's have a look at the crop circle. The crop circle tells PTGUI which parts of the image to use and which not to use. If you have a lens covering the entire image, it might be a square one and then you just use all the pixels. But in this case, we don't want those black parts here. And based on the focal length and the sensor size, PTGUI could set that crop circle quite accurately. So let's go on and generate some control points. I could use the align image button, but it does a whole bunch of things at once. And I want to go step by step to just demonstrate the process a bit more in detail. So we'll maximize the window first, and then we'll go up here into the control points menu and click on generate control points. Now that's generated some control points already, which we can inspect here. We can see image one and image two opened up, for instance, and we can see all the pairs of control points between those two images. Uh, I can have a look at another one, image four, for instance, and as you can see, those colors up here indicate if there is control points found between these images or not. So if you look at one and three, for instance, there's no control points between those. If we select two separate images in this case and click on a control point, you can see it's being highlighted in both and it starts flashing. You have this little loop. If I wanted to add some extra control points, I could just click somewhere 
and then generate a new one. And Pitigui, as you can see, just jumped over and tries to figure out where that point would be in the other image, which is quite a handy feature. And if I wanted to fine tune the control point location, I could use the keyboard keys like that, just the arrow keys, or I can just drag around the mouse. An interesting overview of all your control points is down here in the tools menu and then the control point table window. In here, you've got several columns, the first image and the second image in the pair. As I said before, control points always exist in two images. Um, you can see the type of control point. Uh, we could have some vertical control points, then those would be a little bit different in here. And you can see, of course, the distance. And that is, given how the images are aligned right now, how far are these control points from each other? In this case, you can see this is actually a massive error. And that's because the panorama isn't aligned. The images right now are just sitting on top of each other. So let's go and optimize the project given those control points. And we get a result that is good with a maximum control point distance of 21. That's not too bad, but it sounds like there's some kind of outlier. Well, the control point table comes in handy here. And I can see here's the one with 21 distance and I can click on it. So let's go and have a look a little bit closer. Aha, uh -huh. so that one sits right on an edge and it's of course kind of difficult to find the exact location between the two one. Is it here or is it here or is it here? Well, we'll just delete that one because obviously it is not a very useful control point. So we'll go back to the control point window. Here it is. Now we've got another one with 16. Where's that one? Well, that's also in a sort of a low contrast area. We'll just throw that one out as well and we'll optimize again. And we get a much better result now. Now we're down to 13 in terms of error. And we can continue this process or we can do another thing. I'm just undoing the deletion of control points. And there's actually a feature for this, which is called the delete worst control points down here. If I click on that, PTGUI will say actually, well, look, there's three control points that PTGUI considers to be bad and they will be deleted. So yeah, go ahead and delete those. And then we optimize and then we get a very good result. So it looks like there was three outliers in there that weren't very useful. And PTGUI just decided to throw them out by using that function. And now we got a really good optimizer result. And I'm getting those very good results because I'm using a very well calibrated panoramic tripod head. And you can see there's absolutely no seams in here. If I switch, if I remove the grid again, like that, and I switch to the stitch version so you can see where the different images are because there's some brightness differences, but you can see the lines are just perfectly aligned. So that's looking pretty good. But let's go back to those two views here and show you some extra features. So right now you can see there's a little loop in there, a little loop window. I personally find that one a little bit small as it comes with the default settings, but of course it depends on your screen real estate. I have a slightly larger screen, so I can go into the settings and the control point editor and just adjust that size to let's say 100 pixels. Now we get a much bigger loop window, which is very handy to work with. So I can now, for instance, hold shift down and then shift and drag a rectangle. And that's how I can just select the whole group of control points. And by hitting the delete button, I can delete all of them. I can undo that. I can also, of course, just shift that square around a little bit and that changes the selection there. I can have a different selection down here manually and do something to those control points. Another feature that you can do once you have a selection going, now I'm deleting those, you can right click into that selection and say generate control points here. And that way PTGUI will just generate control points in that specific area. So if I'm saying I've, I want more control points down here, well, I can just select that area and generate some extra control points there. Another thing that allows you to tweak where PTGUI will generate control points is the masking. We'll look at this a little bit more in detail later on, but if I just do a quick mask right here, so I'm disallowing all these pixels being used, uh, you can see they no longer are used in the uh, panorama view, but also when we use the control point generator, if I just select image one and two now, we can see that there are some control points here. Let me kick those out. And if I was to generate control points now, and there's another feature here, which allows you to generate control points just between the two selected images up front. If I run this, you will see that the generator will only generate control points in these areas that are not excluded by the mask. So that's about what I wanted to show you today. And next time we'll just pick up where we left off here and finish off stitching this panorama.